Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. In just under two weeks, OSRS will see one of the biggest updates in terms of expansions with the addition of Valamor, the Shining Kinghood. This new area southeast of the Stranglewood aims to provide the fresh content for scalers and the PVMers alike, and it's poised to be the thing to do until the highly anticipated release of Wild Gothic Sleeps later this year. In this video, we will go over everything you can expect in Valamore and to tell you how to properly prepare for everything so you can start taking advantage of it ASAP. Boys and girls, we will be streaming everything Valamore has to offer on March 20th, as well as making videos on each and every activity for you to learn, so make sure to hit the subscribe button with notifications on. If you remember, I have briefly talked about Valamor and or its content in other uploads, but I haven't made an entire video dedicated on this new area and everything it has to offer. So, the structure for today's video is going over upcoming activities in order of hype, and telling you a few pointers to prepare so you're not locked out of content as soon as the Shining Kingdom drops. Ladies and gentlemen, grab your favorite drink and snack, and let's get right into it. To start off, you won't even be able to enter the Shining Kingdom without one of the newest quests added a few weeks ago by the name Children of the Sun. I personally don't care too much about spoilers, but I'm not going to ruin the fun for others. So, simply put, People from Valamor go to Varrock to introduce themselves, but something happens during their visit and it's up to you to save the day. This quest has absolutely no scaling or combat level requirements, and you don't have to fight anything, meaning that Valamor will be open for scalers so you can join in on the fun. As soon as you're able to step on this brand new area, another quest will be available to you, presumably in the heart of Valamor, a city called Civitas Illa Fortis. This is going to be an intermediate level quest with rewards relevant to this location, and I guess it's going to be like the client of Corinth, which takes you by the hand to show you around. I also assume it will be combat free, but specific requirements are not yet known at the time of making this video. The only thing I can suggest for you to prepare is to be patient with the quest and absolutely not space bar your way through it. If you think about it, how many times do we get to experience truly new content in old school RuneScape, especially a new area this size? Well, it's not too often, so be ready to explore every inch of Alamor, feeling like that 13-year-old kid that started the pixelated adventure in the early 2000s. Let's jump over to smaller scaling activities in Valamore, starting with agility. Get it? Jumping? Agility? No? Oh. Okay. I'm starting with this one because, surprise, the agility method will not be released on the 20th. I'm including it here regardless to be the one-stop shop for everything in the first part of Alamor, so you know what you can expect. Keep up to date on the OSRS Twitter to know when it's dropping. If you're a level 50 agility, a new course will be available to you named the Colossal Worm. This sounds like it's going to be a brand new concept to the term course, because instead of running laps, you will be collecting termites for an NPC called Worm Tongue, who will provide you with an empty jar. From the blog post, it seems like catching termites is what will give you agility experience, and then you will have to trade those in for nifty rewards. We have stackable bone shards, which will feature a new way to train prayer for the low and mid-level brothers and sisters. Basic and advanced to teleport crystals, which will teleport you to the agility guide and back to the course, like the hallowed sepulcher crystals. And yet another look for the graceful outfit, thanks to an item called graceful sewing kit. It is yet to be seen if 50 agility will be enough to do this activity efficiently, or if you will need a few more extra levels to avoid failing as much. Okay, the next ones are not going to be too long, but are actually going to be available as soon as Valamor drops on March 20th. A brand new low-intensity mining activity will require level 41 mining, and the Jackix describes it as if Camdosal mining and the Tears of Gothix had a baby. You will be mining veins on the walls around the designated area, but every now and then, waterfalls will run down a specific vein, which will increase mining success rate by 15%. As you remember, level 41 mining is also needed for a rune pickaxe, so if you've been putting off mining for a while, this would be a good time to start. A new prayer training method will be called Offerings to Rallos, available at level 30 prayer. The summary is that you will bring bones to what I assume will be a temple, bless the bones, chip them into shards, and then offer them to Rallos. For this process, you will need jugs of wine to fill something called a libation pool for a successful offering. When chipping bones into shards, the higher the tier of the bone, the more shards you will get. By using Sunfire Splinters obtained from the Fortis Colosseum, you will be able to charge the wine for more experience, but the maximum stack of bones will go from 1000 to between 500 and 750. This seems like it will mimic mahogany homes where you will need less clicks and less money in exchange for a budget training method. This definitely sounds like something you could be doing on your way to 99 if you don't want to spend as much money, but only time will tell. The last scaling training method for now is for thieving. 
At level 50, you will be able to pickpocket citizens in the bazaar, and these will have a crazy high failure rate under normal conditions. But an NPC by the name Street Urchin, like the little kids in Polnifnij, will distract a particular citizen, which will give you 100% success rate for a short period of time. And you will also auto pickpocket for the duration. During your pickpocketing adventures, you might steal keys from citizens. But what are these used for? Every now and then, a sussy looking character will be chilling outside one of the citizens' homes, and the key will let you in to loot all of their precious belongings to then sell for a profit. If you're caught in the process, you will lose most, if not all, of your loot. To add more thrill to it, every now and then, a house will be marked which means it has a high value target for chances at double the loot, and even an item called an ivory figurine. You will be training these in the Hunter's Guild for a reward pack, or chip them into bone shards to use at the new prayer activity. Up next we will talk about the Hunter Guild and an exciting expansion to the Hunter's Guild to make it less... you know, awful. If you ask me, even the Hunter is pretty boring, we have much better candidates for even more ways to train the skill, but let's be honest, I can't really remember the last time Hunter got some love outside the herbivore and the maniacal monkey hunting after Monkey Madness 2. If you want to train with what I would call the new backbone of Hunter, you will have to partake in a brand new activity called Hunter's Rumors, or better yet, Hunter Contracts. As its name implies, this is basically what a Slayer task is for Slayer, and a farming contract is for farming. A guild master will assign a specific creature, but unlike Slayer, you won't be hunting them for a certain number of times. Rather, you will hunt them until you have collected what Jagex are calling a rare creature part for you to go back to the guild and grab another one. The rumors will range from level 46 for tier 1 and level 91 for tier 4. So, if you don't like Hunter, it would be a good idea to wait and see if you like this activity to make it your method to 99. You will then bring the rare creature part to the Hunter who initially assigned the task, and they will give you bonus experience along a loot sack with useful goodies, such as meat, fur, and bones. They will also have a small chance of obtaining a new Hunter pet by the name Quetzal. Less exciting rewards compared to the pet are a Quetzal Whistle, which serve as teleportation to the Hunter Guild, and pieces of a Hunter outfit that actually work, providing 2.5% catch rate and an additional 5% chance at obtaining a rare creature part if you're wearing the entire outfit. And speaking of Quetzal, do you remember the various methods of transportation around Zaya like the Mining Cards and the Book of the Dead? Well, related to Hunter, Valamor will have its own transportation system all thanks to the Quetzals. You will obtain a basic Quetzal Whistle after 5 Rumors of any tier, but you will need Blueprints as a random reward from Rumors to upgrade it to Enhanced or Perfected. The only difference is the number of charges they hold at 5, 20, and 50 respectively. With a revitalization to the Hunter skill also come new creatures and cool rewards from their resources. Sunlight and Moonlight mods are available at level 65 and 75 Hunter respectively which will be caught in a butterfly jar, and then healing HP or prayer to other people in a 3x3 radius around you. The cool part is that you will also be able to make hunter mixes which are potions with the same effect. So, we might have designated healer roles in group PVM activities in the future. Sunlight and Moonlight Antelopes are available at level 72 and 91 hunter respectively, and they will drop their own horns and meat. Horns will be used to upgrade hunter crossbows and bolts, and meat will be available for you to cook into new best in slot healing items. Basically, they will feature more HP heal than their counterparts, but will heal a base amount first and the rest a few ticks after. So, get that cooking level up as well. Jerboas will require 39 Hunter to catch, which means they will not be part of the Hunter rumors. And they will drop tails free to craft into Hunter spears. Fennec Foxes will be available at level 57 for fox fur, meat and bones. And finally, Mountain Salamanders will be available at level 79 Hunter, but the catch is that you will only be able to use them against other players. But you will need a member of the Hunter Guild to train them, so they can be combat ready. Finally, we will get Mixed Hide Gear, which is a set of hybrid armor for both melee and ranged, for which you only need level 50 defense and 60 ranged to equip. And it will go pretty well with a new Hunter Spear. This is a brand new ranged weapon, which will be the first to ever deal ranged damage, but based on your melee strength. These are consumable and will have other neat bonuses when hunting specific hunter creatures. The, what I would call second most important activity, will go by the name Perilius Moons. Simply put, this will be an exploration type dungeon with focus on mid-level PBM, heavily inspired by the Barrows Brothers. One difference though, is that unlike the Barrows Brothers, which is pretty linear, this new activity will offer different paths as you go along finishing with powerful entities to fight towards the end of the dungeon. For this, Jagex suggests a combat level of 75 or more. 
So, as long as you have base level 60s in your combat stats, you should be good to go for the initial challenge. You will go to the dwarven town named the Camptorum, and this new challenge will be found underneath. Once inside you will be met with 4 different corridors, and only one of them will be open every time you enter. Of course, giving it that sense of randomness at the very beginning. You will find the resources inside, all acquired through skilling and fighting monsters lurking in the shadows. Somewhere in these rooms you will find camps for you to grab a tools relevant to the gathering skills, all of this to make your way up to one of the three demi-bosses known as Naguas. From everything we have heard so far, other than the Barrow's brothers, the corrupted gauntlet and even a bit of… trigger warning, dungeoneering from RuneScape might have also given inspiration for this activity. Something I haven't mentioned though, is that you will be able to fight these powerful entities with a group, although from the blog it says that you're not really there to slay them, but rather contain them so they don't escape the temple. I cannot wait to get into this activity with viewers on stream as soon as Valamor drops. What's more exciting though, especially for mid-level players, are three brand new sets of armor, all with a respective weapon, and we start with a melee one called Blood Rager Set. Along the stats you see on screen, the dual weapons, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce, have an attack speed of 4. Pretty standard, right? Well, they hit twice and come with a powerful special effect. By wearing the powerful set and when successfully hit, you have a 33% chance to proc Blood Thirst which means your next attack will be one tick faster. By using 25% special attack energy, you will sacrifice 10% of your HP to raise your minimum and the maximum hit by 25%, and will guarantee the bloodthirst proc. Don't worry, I'm not a numbers guy either, so simply put, this will be a machine for fast and powerful hits. The Frost Moon set is a melee and magic hybrid set with a weapon called the Spell Spear. Just like before, by wearing the full set, the special effect is that you have a 10% chance for your next melee attack not to be affected by action delay. But this only works for the spear itself and won't build up on any crazy combos with other weapons. The special attack is a lot more interesting and seemingly convoluted than the Blood Rager set. And it is that on a successful hit, your accuracy and the damage are increased by 1% for every tick remaining on a binding cast on your enemy meaning that to take full advantage of the set, it would be a good idea bringing Entangle or Freezing spells. When you use this effect, the binding will be removed. And I wonder how Jagex will go around showing how long you have until your enemy is free for the bind if it isn't for Runelight plugins. To close out the combat triangle, we have the Eclipse set. And like previously, this is a hybrid gear set up for both melee and ranged. And the weapon's damage will be rolled off your melee strength. When wearing the full set, you have a 20% chance to inflict burn, which is a brand new effect to old school runescape. When procced, your target will be dealt one point of damage every 4 ticks for 40 ticks. That's a total of 10 damage, which sounds pretty lame, right? Well, this effect can stack up to 5 times for maximum pain. The Eclipse Atlatl is the newest melee ranged weapon, which will feature a special attack which consumes the remaining burn damage and increase your maximum damage by that number, as well as half that damage for your minimum hit. Which means that this set is for longer fights and aims to chip down your enemy and then finish it off with some powerful hits. To summarize a few minutes of yapping, it looks like these sets will all have their niche use and won't be for all purpose combat like other mid-level items and only time can tell where all of these will shine other than, obviously, Perilius Moon's activities. I definitely see these being fairly valuable, since you're not going to be able to farm bosses as much as repeatable bosses such as Desert Treasure 2 encounters. And now, for what pretty much all of you have been waiting for, the Fortis Colosseum. This aims to be a new PVM activity to please people like No Monkey, so if you find it difficult, you know exactly who to blame. Just kidding, I'm not gonna go too much into the mechanics simply because we know absolutely nothing about them other than what a few enemies look like. And if you have seen that supposed leak of the final boss, don't worry about it, Jagex confirmed it was fake and banned all the weasels behind the plot to inflate the spectral spirit shield prices. The important thing however, is that the new wave base encounter will feature a buff and a debuff system and you will be able to alter every single run according to what suits you the most. In terms of RuneScape, this seems to be inspired by a RuneScape 3 activity called Shattered Worlds, where you can pick buffs and debuffs for every floor you complete. This will pretty much guarantee that no two runs will be the same, keeping it fresh for a long time. What we can talk about though, are the requirements and rewards. If you want to try this on day 1, you're looking to pretty much max out in terms of combat stats, or at least level 95s, with all gear prior to best in slot. We're talking items such as Bando Senefang, Crystal Armored Bofa, and Virtus Robes with Sanguinesti Staff for the passive heals. If you're wealthier though, those mega weapons will definitely come in handy. The Crown Jewel will be the new best in slot ranged cape by the name Dezana's Quiver. 
you're able to charge it with Colosseum currency to give it even more stats and corrupt it for it to never degrade. The new thing about it is that you will be able to store two types of ammo on it and it will use the appropriate one depending on which weapon you use. And this will be a huge buff to the Xerite crossbow. Up next we have the Glaive of Rallos. This is a one-handed chargeable weapon that will bounce off your target and come back to you. It sounds pretty slow at 7 ticks per attack, but the cool thing about it is that it's going to hit twice, dealing from 0 to 75% of your maximum hit. And its special attack features target defense reduction by 10% of its magic level. Simply put, a ranged Dragon War Hammer. I'm pretty sure this will see its niche uses during the Colosseum and the powerful bosses you fight with ranged. Last on the list for new equipable items we have the Sunfire Fanatic Armor, which is simply a better proselyte armor, which has been best in slot prayer bonus since 2004. And by combining resources with the Guardian Boots, we will be getting new boots which will reflect the damage back to the opponent in an area of effect. You will also get the currency called Sunfire Splinters, which not only charges a quiver and a glaive, but can also be combined with fire runes to create a brand new type of rune called Sunfire Runes. This will make your fire spells gain a 10% minimum hit for slightly more consistent damage, and you can even combine the splinters with burnt pages for the Tome of Fire to gain this effect. So, ladies and gentlemen, after this three and a half thousand word essay of old school RuneScape word vomit, let's summarize everything for you to properly prepare for the release of Valamor. To enter, you will need a quest to Children of the Sun, and the second quest will show you around the new area. 41 Mining, 30 Prayer, 50 Thieving for the mid-level training methods, and eventually 50 Agility when the Colossal Worm becomes available. A minimum of 46 Hunter for the first tier of Hunter contracts, all the way up to level 91 for tier 4. Minimum base 60s in combat and gathering skills to carry your own weight at the Perilius Moon's activity, and 95 in your combat stats to take on the Colosseum day 1, as I'm sure more strategies will develop over time to allow you to clear the challenge with slightly lower levels. Boys and girls of all ages, that is it for the only video you need to prepare for the release of Valamor, The Shining Kingdom. If you want to enter our weekly bond giveaway, let me know what you are most excited about and why. Include the term RSN in your comment along with your RuneScape username, and I will draw a winner on Friday to coordinate the drop on Discord. I want to give a massive thank you to all the people that contribute monetarily to this channel, which all goes to my family and my army of donkeys. If you want to be part of this list of legends, click the join button below for a monthly subscription, which includes a ton of cool perks and benefits in the videos, in the live streams, and of course, in the Discord. In the next one, I will show you how to slay Nex in a small team of gamers for the supposed best money maker in the game which is our last one before the biggest update of 2024 so far. I hope you have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Peace.